Welcome to 1968 of Soviet Space Program. With the success of the recent lunar orbital mission, the Space Agency marches forward, aiming to achieve the first crewed lunar landing. For the first order of business, the Cosmos 2 facilities are marked for demolition. The Cosmos 2 has reached the end of its usefulness for this playthrough, and the relinquished funding will now be put to use elsewhere. Following this, the Cosmonaut Complex upgrade is throttled back up to 100%, as we will need the level 5 training rate increase in a later step. The next task is to commence the construction for the crewed lunar lander. There is plenty of credit and funding at the moment, so integration is begun immediately. 264 free applicants are still left over from the previous year so they will be hired into LC4. Worth mentioning is that 800 engineers have temporarily moved to the Soyuz facilities, which is why the R-56 integration times are slow. With the passing of three weeks, the Cosmonaut Complex reaches level 5. This is one of the main objectives needed for the crewed lunar program as it allows the planting of flags on planetary bodies. But for a more immediate need, this upgrade speeds up crewed training. The original group of six cosmonauts have now grown to 12, but the new recruits will be unable to fly any missions until they complete their Soyuz proficiency training estimated to complete in 15 months. From here, we set auto hire to 2000 engineers and move time along to our next mission. The 26th of February marks the first flight for the Soyuz rocket. Sporting a new look, as well as performance upgrades, this is carrying aboard a trio of network satellites, slated for targeted geostationary orbits. If successful, this mission will allow us to close out advanced commercial applications and move on to more lucrative programs. The strategy for this mission is to reach a resonant orbit that will place all three satellites over their respective targeted zones, and then have each of them complete their insertion into a geostationary orbit. In this instance, Principia comes to the rescue again as an Earth-centered, Earth-fixed plotting frame will allow us to visually confirm the needed resonant orbit and make sure it lands the apogees in the required locations. With seconds to completion, the carrier stage depletes its propellant and has to limp on RCS to complete the maneuver. From here, the communication satellites now depart from the carrier and each will have to perform a final 630 meter per second circularization burn over their designated targets. First up, GeoNet-1. It completes a successful insertion and now services its target over Africa. Next, GeoSat-2. Reaching its target zone over Indonesia, it fires up its engine and enters the geostationary orbit. Lastly, Geosat-3. Reaching its destination near the Americas, it ignites and achieves an orbital standstill. With the success of these three satellites, they now transfer ownership to the customer and we get the notice for the completion of the Advanced Commercial Applications Program. Wasting no time, the Advanced Commercial Applications Program is closed. In its place, we accept small bodies flybys at the breakneck pace. The next program we will be aiming for is Early Earth Space Stations which we plan to take after completing one more Venus mission. That, however, 
will require an admin upgrade, as it needs four open slots to accept. Before we leave, we will also terminate McDonnell Aircraft Corporation, as we no longer need a research speed bonus for command modules, and we don't want a 5% speed penalty for human-rated integration. We will also terminate OKB1 and replace them with Illusion Design Bureau to reduce research salaries by 5%. The next bit of logistical strategy is to commence proficiency training so the crew can operate the lunar lander. This is not something you want to forget, as this training takes almost half a year. With no planned Soyuz launches in the near future, we shift back over the engineers from that complex over to the R-56 facilities, and then set auto hire to 2300. We won't be hiring too much more staff, as we need to maintain a large enough positive income such that the next R-56 can immediately be built when the lander integration is completed. May 4th. The LK rocket is completed, and we can now commence building the LOK. Taking learnings from the previous mission, as well as implementing new technologies, the upgraded lunar capsule boasts improved performance. Changes include incorporating the RD-858 engine, as well as reduced mass from mature deep space avionics. But the improvements do not stop there. We know that the current R-56 is oversized for the LOK, so we will make some edits to reduce total cost to launch, and in turn improve rollout times for the crewed vehicle. Starting from the top, the lunar transfer stage is reduced in utilization to only have 3200 delta V. This alone nets a 3 ton savings. Then, the first stage has two of the outer engines removed, and the tank is shortened to maintain the burn time for the RD-253s. Now, almost 150 tons lighter, this new R-56 variant still fits within the LC limits, but allows the crew vehicle to be cheaper and reduces the total integration time by 25 days. Towards the end of July, the lander proficiency training is finally completed for the trio of cosmonauts. And then they immediately begin their Soyuz mission training. We pause again in August as we are coming up to a Venus transfer window. With the Venusian program still active, we will take one final shot to complete a few more contracts and gather further science. 400 engineers are pulled from the R-56 complex to staff for the Soyuz integration. Then immediately after, 100 new engineers are hired to get the R-56 complex back up to 2,000 staff. Passing time to the end of the month, we are finally hitting the home stretch, as the LOK has completed integration and commences rollout. We then jump over to the administration building to begin the next upgrade to unlock the 10th program slot. Construction will be temporarily throttled to 40% while we warp forward. And once the second R-56 pad is completed, the lander is rolled out. With both rockets ready, funding has returned, and the admin construction is brought back up to 100%. This will set up nicely for the early stations program, as it will complete at the same time as the Proton Launch Complex. Now with all that out of the way, it is time for the main event.